everyone and God bless you. Welcome to The Good Book Project here at this channel in our chronological Bible in a Year video podcast to the glory of our Lord. We have reached day 191. Today is Monday, July the 10th in the year of our Lord 2023. Yesterday for day 190, we began the book of Isaiah and we read the first four chapters of his vision, which included Judah's call to repentance for the way they have acted against the Lord. We have the coming house of the Lord to be restored, as well as his judgment on the people. We also have, at the end, Isaiah seeing the Lord's glory for the newly restored Jerusalem and Judah. For today, day 191, we continue on in his vision that he receives from the Lord, beginning with chapter 5 in the book of Isaiah. I will pray us into the word for today, and we will get right into it. Lord, we just come before your throne today, thanking you and giving you praise once again, thanking you for giving us the breath of life in this new week. Thank you that every single Monday this year, you have allowed us to go through your word. Please continue to sustain us and give us the power to honor you and to read your word and get it out there for the people. Lord, I pray over this word today and that you use it to bless us and that we can know you more deeply and know you more full. Know your character, know your spirit, and reveal yourself to us through your word today, Father. In the name of Jesus, we all say, Amen. For today, day 191, we continue on in the book of Isaiah, reading his vision beginning with chapter 5. And we're going to do this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Word of God reads, Isaiah 5, let me sing for my well-beloved a song of my beloved about his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. He dug it up, gathered out its stones, planted it with the choicest vine, built a tower in the middle of it, and also cut out a wine press in it. For he, he looked for it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. Now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, of Judah, please judge between me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Why, when I looked for it to yield grapes, did it yield wild grapes? Now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge, and it will be eaten up. I will break down its wall, and it will be trampled down. I will lay it a wasteland. It won't be pruned or hoed, but it will grow briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain on it. For the vineyard of the Lord of armies is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. He looked for justice, but behold, oppression for righteousness. But behold, a cry of distress. Woe to those who join house to house, who lay field to field until there is no room. And you are made to dwell alone in the middle of the land. In my ears, the Lord of armies says, surely many houses will be desolate, even great and beautiful unoccupied. For 10 acres of vineyard shall yield one bath and a homer of seed shall yield an ephah. Woe to those who rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, who stay late into the night until wine inflames them. The harp, lyre, tambourine, and flute with wine are at their feasts, but they don't respect the work of the Lord. Neither have they considered the operation of his hands. Therefore my people go into captivity for lack of knowledge. Their honorable men are famished and their multitudes are parched with thirst. Therefore Sheol has enlarged its desire, and opened its mouth without measure. And their glory, their multitude, their pomp, and he who rejoices amongst them descend into it. So man is brought low. Mankind is humbled, and the eyes of the arrogant ones are humbled. But the Lord of armies is exalted in justice. And God, the Holy One, is sanctified in righteousness. 
Then the lambs will graze as in their pasture, and strangers will eat the ruins of the rich. Woe to those who draw iniquity with cords of falsehood and wickedness as with cart rope, who say, Let him make haste, let him hasten his work, that we may see it. Let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw near and come, that we may know it. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe to those who are mighty to drink wine and champions at mixing strong drink who acquit the guilty for a bribe, and deny justice for the innocent. Therefore, as the tongue of fire devours the stubble, and as the dry grass sinks down in the flame, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have rejected the law of the Lord of armies, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore the Lord's anger burns against his people, and he has stretched out his hand against them and has struck them. The mountains tremble, and their dead bodies are a refuse in the middle of the streets. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is still stretched out. He will lift up a banner to the nations from far away, and he will whistle for them from the end of the earth. Behold, they will come speedily and swiftly. No one shall be weary nor stumble amongst them. No one shall slumber nor sleep. Neither shall the belt of their waist be united, nor the strap of their sandals be broken, whose arrows are sharp and all their bows bent. Their horses' hooves will be like flint and their wheels like a whirlwind. Their roaring will be like a lioness. They will roar like young lions. Yes, they shall roar and seize their prey and carry it off. And there will be no one to deliver. They will roar against them in that day like the roaring of the sea. If one looks to the land, behold, darkness and distress. The light is darkened in its clouds. Isaiah 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temples. Above him stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. With two he flew. One called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of armies. The whole earth is full of his glory. The foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I live amongst a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of armies. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongs from off the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin forgiven. I heard the Lord's voice saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. He said, Go and tell this people, You hear indeed, and but don't understand. You see indeed, but don't perceive. Make the heart of this people fat. Make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and turn again, and be healed. Then I said, Lord, how long? He answered, Until cities are waste without inhabitant, horses without men, the land become utterly waste, and the Lord has removed men far away. But, and the forsaken places are many within the land. If there is a tenth left in it, 
then also will in turn be consumed. As a terebinth, and as an oak whose stump remains when they are cut down, so the holy seed is its stump. Isaiah 7 In the days of Ahaz the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, Rezin the king of Syria, and Pekah the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, went up to Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. David's house was told, Syria is allied with Ephraim. His heart trembled and the heart of his people, as the trees of the forest tremble with the wind. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out now to meet Ahaz, you and Shear Jashub, your son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool, on the highway of the fuller's field. Tell him, Be careful and be calm. Don't be afraid. Neither let your heart be faint because of these two tales of smoking torches for the fierce anger of Rezin and Syria and of the son of Remaliah. Because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Remaliah have plotted evil against you, saying, Let's go up against Judah and tear it apart, and let's divide it amongst ourselves and set up a king within it, even the son of Tabil. This is what the Lord God says. It shall not stand, neither shall it happen. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Rezin. Within sixty-five years Ephraim shall be broken in pieces, so that it shall not be a people. The head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Remaliah's son. If you will not believe, surely you shall not be established. The Lord spoke again to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I won't ask, I won't tempt the Lord. He said, Listen now, house of David, is it not enough for you to try the patience of men, that you will try the patience of my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin will conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. He shall eat butter and honey, when he knows to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land whose two kings you abhor shall be forsaken. The Lord will bring on you, on your people, and on your father's house, days that have not come, from the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, even the king of Assyria. It will happen in that day that the Lord will whistle for the fly that is in the uttermost part of the rivers of Egypt and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. They shall come and shall all rest in the desolate valleys, in the clefts of the rocks, on all thorn hedges and on all pastures. In that day the Lord will shave with a razor that is hired in the parts beyond the river even with the king of Assyria, the head and the hair of the feet. And it shall also consume the beard. It shall happen in that day that a man shall keep alive a young cow and two sheep. It shall happen that because of the abundance of milk, which they ha shall give, he shall eat butter. For everyone will eat butter and honey that is left within the land. It will happen in that day that every place where they were a thousand vines worth a thousand silver shekels, will be for briars and thorns. People will go there with arrows and with bow, because all the land will be briars and thorns. All the hills that were cultivated with the hoe, you shall not come there for fear of briars and thorns. It shall be for the sending out of oxen and for sheep to tread on. Isaiah 8. The Lord said to me, Take a large tablet and write on it with a man's pen. 
For Mar, Shalal has Baz, hash Baz, and I will take for myself faithful witnesses to testify, Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Jeberachiah. I went to the prophetess, and she conceived, and bore a son. Then the Lord said to me, Call his name Mar Shalal Hash Baz, for before the child knows how to say my father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the plunder of Samaria will be carried away by the king of Assyria. The Lord spoke to me yet again, saying, Because this people has refused the waters of Shiloah that go softly and rejoice in Rezin and Remaliah's son. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord brings upon them the mighty flood waters of the river, the king of Assyria and all his glory. It will come up over all its channels and go over all its banks. It will sweep onward into Judah. It will overflow and pass through. It will reach even to the neck. The stretching out of its wings will fill the width of your land, O Emmanuel. Make an uproar, you peoples, and be broken in pieces. Listen, all you from far countries, dress for battle and be shattered. Dress for battle and be shattered. Take counsel together, and it will be brought to nothing. Speak the word, and it will not stand, for God is with us. For the Lord spoke. For the Lord spoke this to me with a strong hand and instructed me not to walk in the way of this people, saying, Don't call a conspiracy all that this people call a conspiracy. Don't fear their threats or be terrorized. The Lord of armies is who you must respect as holy. He is the one you must fear. He is the one you must dread. He will be a sanctuary. But for both houses of Israel, he will be a stumbling stone and a rock that makes them fall. For the people of Jerusalem, he will be a trap and a snare. Many will stumble over it, fall, be broken, be snared, and be captured. Wrap up the covenant. Seal the law amongst my disciples. I will wait for the Lord, who hides his face from the house of Jacob and I look for him, and I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of armies who dwells in Mount Zion. When they tell you, consult with those who have familiar spirits and with the wizards who chirp and who mutter. Shouldn't a people consult with their God? Shouldn't they consult the dead on behalf of the living? Turn to the law and to the covenant. If they don't speak according to this word, surely there is no mourning for them. They will pass through it, very distressed and hungry. It will happen that when they are hungry, they will worry and curse their king and their God. They will turn their faces upward, then look to the earth and see distress, darkness, and the gloom of anguish. They will be driven into thick darkness. Thank you, Lord, for your perfect word. We have now, in the vision of Isaiah, we see the Lord comparing Israel to the vineyard, the vineyard that has dried up, and the vineyard that he can no longer help. This is because of the way that Israel and Judah have been in their actions and in their heart towards the Lord. And we see here that the vineyard gets dried up as the Lord doesn't help. Then in chapter 6, we see the Isaiah being now called to be a prophet when the Lord gives him a vision in a dream and he sees the Lord with the seraphim on over him. A seraphim then comes and wipes a, takes a coal and wipes his mouth as a sign that his iniquity and his sin have been forgiven. When the Lord asks, who will go and speak to my people? Isaiah is the one who says, here I am, send me. And the Lord then charges Isaiah to be a prophet to his people. In chapter 7, we read of the signs that will be sent to Israel and to Judah about their way 
and I will read something just in a second of how the prophecy goes. And also, we read now that because Israel and Judah the way that they are, now the Lord will break up all of Israel, starting with Ephraim because they are going up against Judah, but the Lord didn't let it happen. And thus the Lord had said that the king of Assyria will come and make trouble for all of the people of the land and will now plunder them and take all of their things. I wanted to read in Isaiah chapter 7 something very significant. Now he is speaking, Isaiah is seeing when the Lord is speaking with Ahaz. And we will read in Isaiah 7, chapter 7, verse 13. He said, Listen now, house of David. Is it not enough for you to try the patience of men, that you will try the patience of my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin will conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. We know exactly what this prophecy is speaking of. We know who has the name Emmanuel. We will read later in the book of Matthew where this prophecy is fulfilled. So, who do we know that is behold, who is born of a virgin who is given the name Emmanuel, who is a son? We know it as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who saves the one who gives life to all of us. So the prophet Isaiah receives this prophecy from the Lord that a virgin will conceive and bear a son and will call his name Emmanuel, fulfilled in scripture later on, which we will read later. But it's so important that this is one of the exact prophecies of the coming Messiah, of the one who saves, the sign of the Lord, Emmanuel. And our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has that name. And with that, day 191 is complete. I'm so happy you were able to make it out today to hear the word of God. I will pray us out of the word for today, and we will go throughout the rest of our day. Lord, we just come before you once again, thanking you for giving us the breath of life. Thank you that in your, in your goodness and in your mercy, you've given us life and you protect us. You allow us to go through your word so we can know you more deeply and more intimately. Lord, I pray for the rest of today and that it is a blessed day by you and that we are blessed and that we may be a blessing to others. Fill us with the Holy Spirit and at all times, have us not be afraid and stand bold for the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the one who saves, the one who gives life, the one who loved us more than anything else on the planet, that he would sacrifice himself for us so we could be once again with you. We praise the name of the Father, we praise the name of the Son, and we praise the name of the Holy Spirit. And we do all of this in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. And we say, Amen. Day 192 is tomorrow, and I can't wait for you to return for it. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance toward you and give you peace.